Hi everybody, this is Chris with UE School uh, with a brand new Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Um, before we get started, let me show you real quick what we're going to be uh, doing in this tutorial. The tutorial is about pawn position and what I came up with to show you how pawn position works with this uh, little platformer here that is a somewhat like trine where you can basically switch between uh, your characters uh, on the fly and as you can see when I switch between they will keep simulating so everything works as you would want it to um, yeah I guess we should get started just let me uh, get this out of the way and we will start by creating a brand new project which we can call uh, possession tutorial um, while this is uh, loading let me uh, quickly explain what possession actually means uh, possession means that you oh that was the wrong project silly me um, No, we should just create a new one. Uh, possession means uh, that you, as a player, take control over a pawn. So, pause to that. This will do. Um, so, as you all know, your characters in the game are all classes that are derived from the pawn class. Uh, a pawn is like this little guy, uh, a character with a capsule and a uh, skeletal mesh that is animated and also a movement component that reacts to input. Um, in order for the pawn to actually receive that input you need to possess it. So uh, why do we need to know this? Well, uh, like in the example that I showed you, you might want to switch between characters or you might want to uh, switch between your character and controlling a car or a uh, a plane or something like that and for this you need to know how to uh, switch possession um, so let's get started uh, first of all uh, we need to set up our blueprints so let's just uh, go here and uh, edit the game mode at first and let's just uh, remove the default pawn class um, this I do just to demonstrate that if you excuse me um oh forgot something so i removed the default pawn class so the uh, game mode won't spawn one and also i uh, need to go into the character here uh, which has a property that is called uh, auto possess player which is currently set to player zero so this would cause uh, this pawn to actually get possessed. Now, when we deactivate it and hit play, uh, it will mess up our camera because uh, the camera won't switch automatically to the pawn because it's no longer possessing the pawn. So, uh, this is just to demonstrate that we are now not controlling any pawn at all. So, what we need to do to change this is uh, basically set up everything um, so that we uh, can possess uh, the pawn. Now, as you saw, we were using uh, three different pawns, and to uh, do this, we're actually going to create new pawns. Now, um, these pawns will all basically derive from our side scroller character, uh, so we can call this character2. And just duplicate this by hitting Control W, and this will automatically call it character three. There it is. So uh, now let's just drag this guys in uh, like this, and maybe like this. Go to the top view and just uh, take a little moment to make those align just perfectly also make sure to let them rotate into the right direction so everything is set 
So this, as you can see, they were both floating. You can just select them, hit end, and this will make them drop them down to the ground. Now. Uh, we want to actually be able to distinguish between the two characters, so what we are going to do now is just a little uh, a little prep work, which doesn't really uh, belong to the tutorial, but I really like to be able to distinguish between my three characters. So what I'm going to do is create a dynamic material instance. Um, what we are trying to accomplish here is... Uh, coloring the the character in a different color so what um, I checked and the the UE4 man body material actually has a parameter which is uh, uh, which controls I'm sorry my English is pretty bad right now, uh, which controls uh, the color of the character so uh, when we create a dynamic material instance we can actually set uh, the color by just setting a vector parameter va uh, vector parameter value. Sorry about that. Uh, the parameter is called body color, and we can change the color right here. So let's make this one like somewhat reddish, or oh, well, that's more of a pink or purple. Um, There you go. So now we have our dynamic material instance. And now what we need to do is get our mesh and set the material to this dynamically created one, like this, for our uh, body material. Uh, this is this one here, element 0, as you can see. And now if you go to our uh, our perspective view here, you can see the color has changed. Now we're just going to copy all of this to our other character, go to the blueprint editor, construction script, paste this in, connect this, and change this color to maybe a nice bluish one. And it doesn't work. Why so? Uh, not sure, maybe we need to compile it. Okay, there. There you go. So, this is our prep work done here. Uh, now, what we're going to do is uh, create a character controller, a uh, player controller. Sorry about that. Now, the player controller is the class that actually uh, controls the pawn and is the first class that will uh, receive inputs. And then, if uh, the character controller doesn't handle that input, it will pass it on to the pawn, which is done automatically, which is pretty cool. Uh, what we're going to do is go to our game mode, which we still have open here, and just hit the Add button at the Player Controller class, select the Blueprint button, and call it My Player Controller. Now, the Player Controller is uh, the class that uh, is going to possess the pawn, so it just makes sense to put everything in here. Now, first of all, uh, we need to create some variables. The first is going to be of class uh, site. No, that's not what I was looking for. Sorry if I hit the microphone. So site scroll a character. And we're going to make it an array of references. We're calling this available characters. So. In this variable, we are going to set all characters that are currently in the map. And this is uh, going to happen in the begin place. So we just get actors of class and select our site scroller character and just plug it in here. So this way, all actors that are present uh, at the begin play event that have the class site scroller character or are derived from it. I actually hope this works. I didn't try it this way, so you see. Uh, it takes all those, uh, puts them in an array, and stores them. Uh, now we need to add another variable, which is not going to be a, an array. We call it current selected character index. 
Now this is going to be set to zero and um, what this is going to store is basically uh, the character that is currently selected. Now, as you all know, uh, at the moment we're not possessing any pawns, so we're just going to call possess at this very moment and call get on this and we're just going to possess the very first pawn that is in this list. So now we are controlling the white one which is the first one we dropped into the map, but actually it was already there. Now what we need to do is set up our input to switch between the pawns. For this we're going to add a new input binding. We're going to project settings, um, input, and go to our action mappings and just uh, make a new action mapping and call it switch sorry switch character just like this um, I'm going to use the tab key for this and now we're done here now inside our player controller we are going to attach us to uh, switch wait uh, did I not call it this way? Maybe a typo. Yeah. This is not what I was looking for. So, switch character. Bam. All right. Uh, let me just go into my example real quick so I can look ah, that's not the example I'm sorry it's the first time I'm doing this so bear with me um, as you might have noticed I already did this so let me just uh, look up really quick how I did this so this is our input event so this is going to be fired when we hit the tab key um, before we actually switch the pawn, we need to make some uh, validations. Now, as you can see, this is uh, an integer, which is uh, pointing to an index inside the available characters index. Now, this in uh, integer could be out of scope. Now, there's currently three characters, which means we have the indices uh, 0, 1, and 2. Now, if there would be a 3 somehow uh, standing inside that variable, which could happen, uh, we will run into problems because we are tr we would try to access an index of the array that actually does not exist. So we need to get some checks running. For this we are going to add a branch in which we will just make some quick checks now. If this variable is greater than or equals to the length of this array. Now, as I told you, there are the indices 0, 1, and 2, um, which means that the last index is 2. Now, the length of the array is 3 because there's three indices. Now, what we need to do for this to compensate is just to subtract one of this. Now, we can plug this in and this should work. So, if the current selected index is greater than or equal to the length of the uh, available characters array minus one. So if this would be two, uh, this would fire true. Now what we're going to do here is basically just reset this. Otherwise, we're going to um, just add to this, sorry, I was a little confused. So we will add plus, we will add one. So this will just basically switch to the next one and this one will switch to the first one now if we already are at the end of the list. So what we now need to do is just get this character. Again, we just going to get this 
now we just need to possess it. So, hook this up, that up, compile, save, play, and now this already works, as you can see. Now, this will happen uh, because the character movement component uh, will just stop working as soon as uh, the character has no controller attached to it. Um, fortunately, there's just a very simple way to counteract that. You go to your uh, base character class, which in our case is uh, not selected here. We need to go to the side scroller character. And we're going to look for physics. And now we need to, of course, select the character movement component. Search for physics. And there's the options run physics with no controller attached. Uh, with no controller. So this is checked. The physics will just keep on simulating even though we're no longer attached to the pawn. Which will allow us to basically switch the pawn at every time and it will just work as you would expect. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you found this tutorial uh, helpful. Uh, remember to like, subscribe the video, uh, to the channel. Um, if you want uh, any specific new tutorials or want a, maybe want a C++ version of this tutorial, just let me know in the comments below. And, yeah, see you next time.